up next, it is a UFC welterweight championship showdown between Matt Hughes and the UFC Hall of Famer, BJ Penn. Well, a long winning streak may guarantee you a title fight in other divisions, certainly doesn't at 170 pounds. But now, with all the contenders behind him, there is one man left standing. It is this man, the number one welterweight contender, now getting his shot at the dominant champion. And he believes, without a shadow of a doubt, that he is the best 170 in the world. And he is out to prove it right here, right now. the reigning defending undisputed UFC welterweight champion of the world and in a division that has so much depth in that top 15 it's even more remarkable that this man has remained the hunted the question tonight with a powerful challenger out of that blue corner can he walk away and still Till the tape for this welterweight championship fight. So a more than five-year gap between these two fighters when it comes to the age, with the same height and some differences in reach. Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Dan Mergliata. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the sold-out Toyota Center in Houston, Texas. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC welterweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 16 wins, 14 losses, and two draws. He stands five feet nine inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Hilo, Hawaii, presenting the challenger, the Now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of 45 wins, 9 losses. He stands 5 feet 9 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds, fighting out of Hillsborough, Illinois, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC welterweight champion of the world, Matt. Huge. All right, this is for the UFC Championship. I want you to obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times, and a nice, clean, safe fight. Touch gloves, come back to your corners, come out fighting. They touch him up, and we are underway. in this division can grapple as effectively as he can, but maybe some pause tonight given the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt on the other side. Yes, and he may use his grappling in reverse to stay upright because this Jiu-Jitsu fighter is such a great fighter. He's such a fantastic fighter. He's so skilled. He's so tricky and he's so good at weaving a web that gets you lost in it. That standing may be this grappler's best chance to win the fight. Both guys throwing potential fight-enders here in the early going. 
boy, Ty Plum. Man, he's timing his shots nicely. It's like Tom Brady out there. He hasn't missed the target. I mean, you insist on bringing in <laughs> Tom Brady. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by this gentleman. Straight right, he misses. All right, so both fighters now sort of struggling for position here in the clinch. When you find yourself in this situation, what do you do to get out? Anytime it's very tough, anytime you're chest to chest, you have nowhere to go, I think to myself, underhook. Whoever's winning the underhook is winning the clinch battle. Oh, collar tie. Straight punch land. Again, back into this position. Stuffs that takedown attempt without issue. Just out of range with that uppercut. Caught that kick there. A oh, really good job by him there to raise the guard DC and block those shots coming his way. He does a great job of blocking all incoming strikes. Big kick lands. Back and forth we go! Well, that's not what you're looking for defensively. He moved right into that hook, and his opponent wisely lands it to the body there. He has been increasingly more susceptible to that strike. Let's see if that one gets his attention. A little single collar tie there. Now he's got the Muay Thai block. Right hand punch to the clinch. And gets caught with that punch. And they separate. Left hand punch to the clinch. shot to the body. One takedown is easy to defend. When you start stringing them together is when guys struggle. Now the guy's got on bar. He's attacking it on him. He's attacking on bar now. No! Oh, he kicked him up and he slammed him and he ends up in side control. Now he's in no danger of a submission. How about that? He's like, you go here. <laughs> My arm's free, and now he's got plenty of room to operate here out of side control. Nicely done. Out. Well, these are some excellent ground and pound strikes here, DC. There's an efficiency with which he operates in these situations. He knows exactly when to throw, exactly when to hold. It's allowing him to really control the grappling aspect of the fight. There's a song there, right? Know when to hold him, know, know when, when to fold him. Yep, absolutely. Go. Oh, nice work from the bottom. Tags him with the punch. Side control now. I love watching this guy move on the ground. Another nice transition there. Such a high-level grappler. You don't see that very often. Side control now, DC. A lot of options at his disposal from here. All right, bottom fighter here. Maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Side control. Final minute. Trying to pass the guard here, but a nice job by the bottom fighter defense. Bottom fighter did a fantastic job of following with his hips making sure he blocked any attempt to get past his guard. Well, as usual, suffocating work from the top here by Hughes. Oh, he's got him in the crucifix now. A lot of body weight from the top position. If you're on bottom here, this is not a good place to You be. have got to free one arm. You cannot worry about both of them. Get one free and then start building towards doing something else. But the first step is to get a arm free to start trying to be able to defend yourself. You have nothing blocking your face when you're in this position. Final seconds of round one. Good work from the top here by Hughes. That horn sounds means we have reached the end of round one. All right, so that's the end of the round. A lot of highlights from which to choose, but his success in that round certainly rooted in his offensive takedown. And that's what he does, right? He's a grinder. He's the type of guy that wants to get a hold of you, drag you to the floor. It doesn't bother him that much if you get back to your feet. He just wants to continue to make you work the entire time because he understands this type of grind most guys can't keep up with.
All right, so perhaps a little frustration creeping in as our next round gets underway. Very close to submitting his opponent in the previous round, but was unable to do so. Wasn't able to do it, but he was so, so very close. He's trying to put himself back in that position, and maybe this time he gets the finish he wants so bad. Nice straight run. Oh, single collar tie here. I mean, he's cutting them down to size with these beautiful leg kicks. Well done to catch the kick. We'll see what he can do with it. Taken down here by Hughes. Well, the body work's starting to take its toll. Look at the redness starting to appear on his left side. Keep it busy here off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Hughes has got the full mount. Outstanding ground and pound here. Somewhat of a lost art in MMA, at least in terms of making sure that every strike counts. Not an issue for him. He's making every single one of them count. He is not pity pat. He's not touching. Every punch that lands, he wants you to feel it. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Cannot allow him to get leverage on the bottom. What a sweep. Oh, and he's able to land a strike there from the bottom. Nicely done by Penn. All right, full guard here, DC. We'll see how soon he tries to pass. Well, he needs to be passing immediately. In the full guard is where you are in most danger as a top fighter because they have all of their submissions. Right. They have the guillotine. They have the arm bar. They have the kimuras. They have all their locks when they're in the full guard. So if you pass, you really do limit the danger that you're in from the top position. Man, how fun is this to watch as he continues to dole out damage with the ground and pound? Take it back to the days of guys like Mark Coleman just beating people up in the ground and pound. This guy is a throwback fighter. He's very fun to watch. Yeah, the godfather would be proud. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. Continuing to look for openings here with Penn on the canvas. Oh, man. This ground and pound is good. Probably my favorite striking realm in MMA, and he's as good as it gets. The problem is his opponent is not controlling his posture. He's allowing his opponent to get up, and when he does, he creates this space to land these beautiful ground and pound combinations. Well, the ground and pound has been on point tonight. Good work here by Hughes. He's putting him in exactly the position he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here, and he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. Oh, now trying to isolate an arm, DC. He needs to move his hips back to cover. He cannot allow him on that angle. And attack an arm bar. Continuing to try to manipulate the head here. There you go. And there it is. Submission tonight, champ. He was able to get the fight to the ground exactly where he wanted it. Eventually, his opponent gave him an opportunity to get a submission. He did that, and he should be very proud of the work he did tonight in the octagon. And ladies and gentlemen, there he is, a man that needs no introduction, the undisputed UFC welterweight champion of the world, and your winner tonight, by way of spectacular submission. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Berkley out has called a stop to this contest at three minutes, 53 seconds of round number two.
join the winner by submission due to an armbar. So his welterweight greatness continues tonight and still UFC champion. I think on nights like tonight, you're glad you don't fight at 170 pounds. This dude's a problem. I mean, he is a problem for anybody. Anybody within the weight area. If he decides to go up, he's a problem at 180.